First up, um, this lovely lady is a screenwriter, model, producer, activist. I, it's so fun to go back and watch the first movie. Uh, she had one single line where she says hello to Harry. And then just picture the, how that character grew and developed and the uh, actor that she became and then just the important character uh, that she became in this series. Let's give it up for Ginny Weasley. Please welcome Bonnie Wright to the virtual stage. Hey, Hello, Bonnie. How's it going? 2001, my gosh, so long ago. It's insane. Almost uh, 20 years ago uh, next year. Thank you for being here uh, and joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, let's get uh, everyone out here. We've got uh, a whole mix of different cast members from different series. Uh, these next three actors have tons and tons of television and film credits. I'm not gonna be able to name all of them, but I'm just gonna try to hit some of their highlights. Veteran of stage and screen, award-winning actress known for her work in the age of innocence. Um, she was in Romeo and Juliet and she plays Professor Sprout. Please give it up for Miriam Margulies. Hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hello, Miriam. Thank you. And thank you, Guy, for cheering in the background. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's awkward on our end. We know you're hearing applause. We just hear dead silence. So, uh, Miriam, thank you so much. You look so lovely today. Thank you for uh, joining us on this call. <laughs> All right. This next gentleman, again, countless films and television shows. Um, here's a short list. The Strain. Um, he played the Despicable. Man, how, if you didn't hate this character... You have no pulse. Uh, Walter Frey, but it was because he was so good. Uh, from Game of Thrones, uh, he is part of the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy, uh, which, I, uh, which I love. Um, he played Filch in Harry Potter. Please get up for David Bradley. Hooray, Nikki Nacky New. <laughs> Hello. Hello, David. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. So many awesome series. Speaking of uh, connections to other nerddoms, we talked about Game of Thrones. We have another Game of Thrones uh, actor coming out. Not only Game of Thrones, but my gosh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Empire Strikes Back, uh, the Bond film, For Your Eyes Only. That's just barely scratching the surface. I just learned this reason. I, I knew this actor. I didn't realize he was the voice of the, uh, the spider from the uh, forest, Aragog. Please welcome to the virtual stage, Julian Glover. Yay! Hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Well, <laughs> Julian, that is a great point. We have folks watching like on the west coast of the U.S. where it's uh, still early morning, uh, the, uh, all throughout the country, obviously in the U.K., France, and then Australia, where it's four, people are waiting up till 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning, and they're still tuning in. Um, amazing. They must amazing. be nuts. They, they, they are clearly nuts. They are clearly nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they do it all the time for these panels. It's so cool. If, if it's a fandom that they know and love, or if it's a series they know and love, our Australian and New Zealand fans and Philippine fans have been awesome. So we appreciate you all staying up late to the wee hours uh, or waking up in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, let's keep the love fest going for our Harry Potter actors. Uh, this next gentleman from, you know, him from V for Vendetta. He uh, took on the iconic role of General Tarkin um, in Rogue One. Uh, please give it up for Guy. Oh, and he plays Thickness uh, in Harry Potter. Give it up for Guy Henry. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Guy. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you. Lovely to see you, too. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We're almost hello. there, y'all. We've got one, two, three, four, five out. Two more to go. Let's do it so we can get this uh, panel started. Um, first up, you know him recently um, from Marcella and Robin Hood. He is an actor and mixed arts martial artist. He plays one half of the grab at Crab and Goyle um, duo. Please get up for Goyle himself, Josh Herdman. Woo! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hello. Josh, Josh, Josh. Welcome, welcome. Josh, thank you for being with us. Uh, Josh informed us beforehand that he's got a, a, a birthday party with ma massive amount of kids going on right outside the door. So we pre this is a nice break for him right now. So we appreciate it, Josh, for you being here. <laughs> Take a little break from the party. Uh, and last, yeah. but certainly not least, uh, from American Assassin and Shoot on Sight, uh, he plays Karkaroff's aide in the Harry Potter series. Please get up for Tolka Safer. Hey. hey! Hi, guys. Hey! We did it. We made. We all made it out. Hey. We all made it out to the point. That's the hardest part. That's the most difficult part. Uh, I want to go around the room really quick. We we have limited time, and we have so many uh, amazing, <coughs> talented actors uh, from the Harry Potter series. One of the most universally watched and known and popular series film series of all time. I mean, we've got the books, obviously, and then the films, and then the theme parks. Uh, there is just so much fandom surrounding uh, this character that was brought to life 
over 20, 25 years ago. Uh, the movies are almost 20 years old. I would just love to bounce around the room a little bit. We'll start with the ladies and just just tell us a little bit about what the series has meant to you personally. Um, just the fandom and, and everything surrounding it and how it's just really affected your life. Bonnie, let's, let's uh, kick things off with you. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's hugely affected uh, my life, 10 years of an experience. Um, <laughs> and I guess, you know, I never knew the fate of Ginny's role at the beginning. So it was all quite, uh, took it as it, ca- as it came for everyone. It was the same thing. So I never would have imagined that she would have ended up with Harry and, and the, the role developed in the way it did. Um, and, you know, I fell in love with an industry that I knew nothing about as a nine-year-old and now, you know, love it. And um, I feel like it's just, it's an amazing thing that it keeps going. I mean, these new generations, you meet kids who are super young and they're just getting into it. And it's this amazing lasting uh, thing. And it's the same for me. I mean, it's had a lasting impact. You know, it continues to like surprise me of, of how uh, significant it was. So, That's so yeah. awesome. And, and a credit to you as an actor. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know how, how much they would use um, Ginny initially, you know, she was obviously had parts, you know, she had a play in the book, um, but just one simple line in that first movie, uh, and then just set, set up the stage, you know, obviously a big character in Chamber of Secrets and then come back in, uh, um, uh, what's my gosh, Goblet of Fire, you know what I mean? And then becomes uh, Harry's love uh, in the end. So what a, what a yeah. journey, journey to see uh, for her, for sure. Yeah, I always think that my first line was maybe like a secret message to myself of good luck for the whole thing. <laughs> it's funny, you can see, I mean, maybe it's just the nerd in me, but you you can see the glisten in, in, uh, in your eyes when you say goodbye to Harry and then, you know, it obviously leads to... Uh, yeah, to I think I was probably just terrified. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Walking awesome. on film set, yeah. Yeah. Miriam, you get uh, the teachers are one of the most beloved parts of the Harry Potter series. They're so, they're so unique. Um, each one of them is such a, a, a character and you brought Sprout to life like like no other. Like we, when you saw Sprout, you're like, oh, duh, this is Sprout. You know what I mean? This is the Sprout that I remember when we read the book and you, you brought her to life uh, so perfectly. Uh, what was it like playing that part? And just what do you, how do you feel about the whole Harry Potter series as a whole? Well, I'm very grateful to it because I made a lot of money from it. And that's <laughs> the thing that's most attractive. Um, I didn't really have to act at all. I just went on stage or onto the set in a funny costume and um, enjoyed myself. Uh, I, I think it was great fun, and I liked all the people. The best bit was when we were in the trailers go, waiting to go on set and had such lovely talks because an awful lot of the English acting profession were in the show, and um, it was just wonderful to see them and be with them. Oh my so I, I had a lovely time, and I'm very grateful to it. I haven't seen any of the films, and I never read any of the books. So no. it's a bit rather extraordinary to me, but I, I'm enjoying myself. And thank you for having me in this panel. Oh, my gosh. It's it, it's so interesting when you hear that um, folks like, you know, just don't go back and watch their work. I mean, I can speak for all the fans when we said you were perfect. You looked amazing and, and you fit into the world so well. So we appreciate you being here and thank you uh, for doing it. Uh, shout out to uh, fans uh, asking questions right now, Charlotte Walton and also Megan Mullins. This panel is going to go fast, so I want to make sure to get our fans that are watching. You know, they asking questions about your favorite memories in the series. Uh, if you've read the books beforehand, Miriam, you kind of answered a little bit of both of those. So, you know, anyone who wants to take on those as they as they speak about their uh, love for the series, feel free. But shout out to those fans watching. David, uh, you play the the fun and uh, awesome character throughout all series of Filch. Uh, you love to hate Filch. You you know he has a heart down there deep. You know what I mean. But he's just like the grumpy uh, <laughs> uh, person that takes care of the castle. Tell us about your experience with Filch and just like being a part of the the Harry Potter fandom. Oh uh, well, when, when I first read it, I thought, well, this this could be fun, but it, it, and, and there was so much pressure from my kids say, Dad, you've got to get this one. But at the <laughs> time, of course, we didn't know it was going to turn into like eight movies or whatever. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was just um, a fun one-off. And um, I thought, I'm, I'm going to be a hate figure for kids everywhere. But then I went <laughs> to the first premiere with my wife and three kids, and, and I heard my first titter. I thought, oh, this is okay. Here we go. So, and I was so glad that the young fans found him funny. And, uh, and of course, what gave him a bit of humanity was the fact that he loved his cat. So, yes. in the end, it turned out to be just a, quite a, a richer character than I imagined when I first read it. 
Was yeah. Mrs. Norris, did Mrs. Norris, I hate to ask this just in case something tragic happened, but was Mrs. Norris the same cat throughout the entire series? Did you uh, fall um, in love with Well, her? we had two, Max and Alanis. And, um, they were identical and they were scraped up through that. But they're beautiful cats, very yeah. intelligent, Maine Coons. And uh, so if, if one was um, not feeling up to it, uh, uh, actually one, one of them was, uh, Max was better at lying in my arms for a whole afternoon without oh. any bother. And um, Alanis was very good at following me around. So it was like whatever skill was required for that particular shot. Oh my gosh, you know? that's so cool. It's so, uh, you know, you, yeah, you never really hear the stories of the animals, right? Uh, in things and that's uh, such a sweet story. Uh, Jenny Four actually just asked, how was it working with Mrs. Norris, which, which you just uh, relayed for us. So there's your answer, uh, Jenny. Um, yeah, the char- uh, such a lovable character that has that sense of, humor and and lightheartedness behind him but it's just you know at the end of the day a grumpy old groundskeeper you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh well it was awesome and and one of one of the fan favorite characters for sure uh, yeah, thank you julian again i mentioned this in your intro a huge fan of of all of your work uh prior to harry potter obviously in such huge um fan series uh the indiana jones uh series obviously star wars a uh, bond i mean again that's just scratching the surface so thank you for being here I did not realize that you were the voice of Aragog, and now you're also a part of this fandom now, too. What is it that uh, sets apart, I guess, like the Harry Potter fandom to you, as opposed to all of these other hugely successful fan series that you've been a part of? Well, I, I'm, the main thing is that I'm only a voice. I'm not a, not a physical presence on the screen. Um, <laughs> as I wittily say, I didn't have enough legs to play the part. <laughs> uh, but I hope I've done well with the, with the voice. I got the voice uh, purely by audition. Uh, many, many people were up for it. And I got it uh, because it happened that my voice happened only. Nothing to do with my quality as an actor, it's, they, they reckon that it sounded like a spider. Well, if they knew what a spider sounded like, they would have got somebody else maybe. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> feeling about uh, Harry Potter is, is quite strong because uh, I find at conventions that despite it's only a voice, people come to me and they really are interested in the, in the character. And... Um, character they're interested in the spider and what he does in the film which is lovely and also i have a particular f- f- fondness for uh, the harry potter franchise because uh, in the play in london called harry potter and yes. the child uh, my son jamie glover uh, played harry potter for a year a couple of years ago so i feel very close to the whole franchise very and, nice. um, it's like, and of course, it, I feel particularly pleased th- today because I see so many people I know and love uh, in front of me now. Uh, so hello, guys, and hello to you <laughs> all over the world. It's lovely to talk to you. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. And that's so cool to hear about uh, your son. Uh, what a beautiful stage production. My gosh, they really took that world that was, you could think would only be created in film and <clears> translated <throat> it to a live stage. And oh, it's, it's so much. Amazing. And the thing on the stage, they're the, uh, the actors standing in front of you. You know that in films, they can achieve fantastic magic. But in front of you, in the theater, you see someone turning into somebody else in front of your very eyes. Yeah, it's amazing. That is magic, real magic. Yeah. And that's what's so extraordinarily clever about the stage presentation. Sorry, I've been talking too much. No, 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 no. It's it's, it's great to hear. And uh, I think it's part of the fandom as well, the stage productions. And, you know, fingers crossed, uh, our love goes out there to all of the theaters of the world and theater actors and, you know, everyone working behind the scenes. It's tough right now. But, hope, you know, fingers crossed, stay safe, wear that mask, and we can get back to, uh, get back to things soon. Um, Guy, you come in uh, later later on in the series uh, as you know as part of the Ministry of Magic. You're the uh, the uh, law, head of law enforcement. You know this is a point in the series where uh, you know Voldemort's back. You know what I mean, and the the government is kind of corrupt. Not to not to draw any parallels to anything going on in, in recent days, but what was it like coming in as that sort of you know part of a good organization, but had sort of bad intentions? You know what I mean, as as your characters of the uh, Ministry of Magic. Yeah, I think uh, I was uh, 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 essentially a very lovely person, but apparently I was <laughs> under uh, I, I was under a bit of an imperial curse, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which was never really mentioned in the film, so I a little bit, oh, a bit uh, starey, glary eyed, and a bit strange, and everything. <laughs> and I do. I often wonder if people thought, "What's what's the matter with him?" 
Has he been on the source? Which, of course, I never was. Um, so, yeah, he was, a, he was a lovely character to play, though, in the, in, the, in the relatively little bits I did. And I agree with everyone else. It was such a fantastic thing to be part of. Very nice people. And uh, it was great. I mean, there's two friends of mine from uh, the theatre that I've worked with, David Bradley, and uh, alongside in the next day, Julian Glover with the, Royal, with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And there was yes. something about the Harry Potter thing that was a bit like... Uh, the, being in a theatre company like the RSC or something, because a lot of old actors shouting in wigs. Lovely. It beca- you know, it became kind of the... Um, <laughs> it became, and it became kind of like the uh, sort of uh, maybe another comparison, like a, a Doctor Who type situation where you get the who's who of, of British actors, you know what I mean, coming well, in to play certain these parts. People, yeah. Certain people who shall remain nameless, like I think Harriet Walter, who's uh, who I don't think was in it and gets very cross that they weren't in it. <laughs> I have somebody else in it and not me. But, uh, she does not seriously. But it was a lovely thing to be part of. Uh, very, very fortunate that I was in it. I, 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 I agree with everyone on that. It was a lovely thing to be a part of. And then it carries on because we do things like this and when we're allowed to go out there and hug people and get too close to them and things again, we'll be doing that as well. And it's great uh, to, to, to meet the people who, who love that world so much. It's a yeah. nice, and it's got a good heart, I think. It, uh, it has a, a beautiful heart. And that's why I think it continues to be shown over and over and over again. And will and will last for 50, hundred years. I think, you know, it'll keep, people will keep watching it um, because of that heart. I think that's an important, important message for sure. Um, Cause Shuki doctor asked what it's like to work in this ha- uh, huge franchise. So I just want to give a shout out to uh, Kashuki who's watching um, Josh. Let's, let's turn to you um, again. Speaking of, of characters, we love to hate. Crab and Goyle, obviously, along with Malfoy, are that student trio that we just, anytime they were on screen, we were, we were laughing, we were guffawing, we were like just hoping Harry and his friends would, would pull through and, and trick them to live another day. Uh, speak a little bit about being part of that trio, you know what I mean, of Crab, Goyle, Malfoy, and just, you know, again, starting so young and then just go, like age, literally aging along with us throughout the series. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was uh, an extremely surreal surreal experience. Uh, sure. and I, I, you know, when I think about it now, it's still it's still extremely surreal. This is surreal. Uh, you know, I, I find it it's a little bit hard, I don't know. I find it hard a bit hard to comprehend how many people around the world are actually watching this. It's it's, it's crazy. It's um, crazy. But it was yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was. I mean, yeah, it was it was just a fantastic experience, um, and, and much like Guy said, I just feel very fortunate to have been a part of it. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's just just fantastic. Yeah, very awesome, very awesome. Tolga, one of my my favorite film. That you know, everyone argues which what their favorite film is in the series. Uh, I'm gonna out myself right now. It's Goblet of Fire. I think it's like the kids are Mine just too. old enough. Yeah, kids. I know that's where that. There's you see where I'm getting at. Yeah. <laughs> um, the kids are old enough. There's cool action. We see Voldemort for the first time. You know what I mean? There's just a lot of elements that come together uh, in the series. And obviously, that's that's your that's your main film. You know, again, tell it. And and this is now the height of popularity. It was funny. Uh, Bonnie was mentioning. You know, like not knowing up uh, and and David not knowing up front if this series would go on like if it would be successful you don't know you know what i mean chris columbus comes in you know uh, as a young director and and has to create this world that's so popular but again then we get to goblet of fire and the series is already hugely successful what was it like walking in to that fandom well i mean i was a humongous fan of of both the books and the films before so uh, you know very different from bonnie who came in right at the beginning sure. i came in midway through i mean these movies and, and the books were huge um, and I'd read, uh, I'd read the, the fourth book and there was a, a, a particular character in it that I thought I was right for because it was kind of physically described <laughs> like me. And sure. it was, it was um, the character of Victor Crumb. And um, I went in and went through the kind of the whole audition process in London. You know, you go back and forth to different auditions and ended sure. up going to the studios to meet uh, Mike one-on-one with uh, the casting directors. And, um, you know, obviously I really wanted this, this role. Um, and, um, unfortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, it didn't go my way. Sure. Um, but, um, I was told later on, and I, I believe this is still true. I was told by David Heyman that I'm the only actor across the whole franchise whose role was actually created for them, um, cool. after they didn't get a different part. So I'm very lucky indeed. So for me, it was an absolute dream come true and a huge honor to 
not get one role, but have impressed Mike Newell and, and yeah. the producers and the studios enough that they could bring me on board. In a, and I'm a tiny fish in the grand pond that is Harry Potter, but I'm still a fish in that pond. So I'm really proud of that. I'm, I'm really, really, really still to this day, like Josh, I'm always like, wow, was I really part of that? That's so cool. That's uh, that's so cool to hear that story. You know what I mean? Of the character created for you. We've even got, I mean, people and every character matters in the series. That's why it's so such an awesome series. You know, everyone gets featured even from the smallest characters all the way up to Harry. You know what I mean? And even uh, folks in the chat, Damon Lynn Strange, 1985, uh, saying Tolga, Tolga is the man. You know, everyone still knows you from that, from that movie. So uh, we appreciate you doing that. Um, Guy, you mentioned a little bit, you joked like how there were parts left out or there were some, you know, details left out for thickness, you know what I mean, that, that you were playing that maybe, um, you know, they didn't pull over from, from the book. And, you know, this is, this question comes up always with books to movies. You can't do everything. Uh, but the question from Ashley Powell, for, for anyone really on the panel, um, whoever wants to kick it off is, you know, if you have read the books, and I know Miriam, you said you hadn't, but uh, for anyone who had read the books, was there anything, any minute detail or, or a specific thing you wish had been added in the movies for your character? Probably get asked this a bunch or a lot, but I don't know if anyone has anything that sticks out. Uh, yeah, I'll chime in. I get yeah, yeah. like it happens. I, I guess with all things, when you understand more about how like books are adapted into films, how obviously if only we could have made like four or five hour long movies, I'm sure. For sure. Loved it, and we would have too. Um, <laughs> but you realize that like the script has to just serve the hero of the story because that's kind of like as much as you can fit in the course of a film. But it did mean I found it a little bit frustrating at times because there were parts of the character that you'd have to maybe show up performing and just knowing for yourself, but sure. you wouldn't get to sort of explore. Like for for Ginny and Harry's relationship, it kind of just like happens almost, and I feel like it would have been cooler if it was closer to the book which is like these slightly more kind of hints to it kind of bubbling under the surface and like developing and I think I'd have loved even though it wasn't the most comfortable experience playing Quidditch I think for Ginny's role it would have been cool to play more of the Quidditch but I'm not sure how much I would have like rushed to sit on the strange contraption that was a Quidditch broom and a bicycle seat um that we had, but yeah, I think just, <laughs> if only the movies could have been like super long and we could have included all those elements to it. And I know from the fans I meet, they have the exact same opinion when it comes to Ginny and wishing there was more of her, so. Yeah, even fans in the uh, comments yeah. right now are like, oh, I wish they would have shown more of Ginny's full character from the books, you know what I mean, things like that. But like like you said, things that, decisions have to be made. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, um, oh, and I know, oh, I know as a fan, yeah, uh, Jolie, hey. yeah that uh, m most of us here have all been in adaptations of books. Sure. Uh, I learned my lesson very early on when I did an adaptation of Charles Dickens' Dombey and Son, and I read the book inside out. I spent the whole time being frustrated that I wasn't <laughs> able to show this or that part. I do understand that feeling. Ever since then, I never read the book beforehand. I read what's on the script, and uh, I might fall on my ass for doing that. Uh, yeah but I don't care. I'm not influenced. <laughs> I'm only influenced by the script. And that's the way I do it. And uh, I think probably quite a lot of our, my colleagues do the same. Mm. Yeah. Well, when I read the first book, um, there was a line where Filch catches out Ron, Harry and Hermione in a tower or something with a dragon's egg, I can't remember. And and I, I had a line in the book, which was, uh, oh dear, we are in trouble. And it wasn't in the film. And I thought, oh, that's a shame, because I, I just a beautiful line. So when we did Chamber of Secrets, and the kids had come in the car, survived the Whomping Willow, they're coming up the stairs into the Great Hall. And my line in the script was, um, oh, it's detention for you lot, which I thought was not as strong a line. So I said to Chris Columbus, what about this, oh, dear, we? He said, yeah, go for it. And so that's probably the line that most kids quote back at me now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was just so glad I'd read the book so I could slip it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Guy, you were you were like nodding your head a little bit too. I, I know we talked about this briefly um, for a little bit, but you come in in, in Deathly Hallows and by that point, so much is happening. Like, you know what I mean? It's really, really tough at this point. And even split into two, two parts, you know what I mean? So much is happening. It's tough to really, it was tough to get a deep dive um, into thickness for sure. But um, anything stick out specifically to you? 
Well, I hadn't uh, seen any of the films, um, oh. I'm sorry to say, uh, uh, up to that point. And um, uh, I had a, a, a lodger lived in my flat in, in Tooting, and he said, well, you've got to watch them, haven't you? And I thought, oh, Lordy, no. But uh, I loved them. And I, I kept shedding manly tears. Well, not very manly, Mike, because, you know, I was having I loved it. So I, had a, I had a crash course in it, so I was just very glad to be there. Yeah. And I like being in the trailers, as Miriam was saying. I had a very large trailer. <laughs> and uh, I didn't deserve it, but I, it was great. It was just wonderful. So, But, no, I don't – I didn't really bring anything uh, – uh, you know, to, to but a great deal of affection from having just done a crash course in them. Yeah, it's amazing, Miriam. Um, we, you mentioned earlier in your little introduction that you you hadn't read you you too hadn't read the books. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, and then then that's what's so amazing because again, I know I speak for all the fans when we say like your Madam Sprout was what we saw in the books, and you just brought it so well uh, eloquently to life. Um, your portrayal was so so amazing. What was it? What was your process like then using that script to sort of um, that initial script to create this character that had already been pictured in so many people's heads <laughs> uh, in the book? Well, I didn't have a process. I just said the lines oh because gosh. I thought they were very much like me. <laughs> and that's why I was cast, I suppose. <laughs> so I just said them as I would say them. And, and uh, I am the, the headmistress of Hufflepuff. And, and yes. so I just did it like a headmistress. <laughs> I, I don't think there was much um, actual dramatic skill involved, to be honest. It's what we call <laughs> N-A-R. No acting required. <laughs> the pros, the pros. See, uh, we're, le we're learning so much. Anyone who's uh, an aspiring actor out there, you're hearing from some of the greats right here. Uh, don't read the book. No acting required. Just be, go in as yourself and you'll get cast. I love this. I love this. We're getting a, a little acting class here as well. <laughs> um, can, I, can I ask, M Miriam, are you ever tempted to watch them or you just don't even think about them? No, I'm not tempted to watch them because, uh, to be quite honest, I don't really like fantasy. Right. I love uh, my my industry, mm -hmm. and I know that fantasy is a big part of it, but it's just not the one that I enjoy. So mm -hmm. I like rather nitty-gritty films dealing with what I call real life. life. I don't think Harry Potter deals with real life. It deals <laughs> with a fantasy life, which is rich and imaginative and full of surprises and fascinating but it's just not for moi. That's all. This is uh, fair I enough. Would... Yeah, I would very much listen to a podcast uh, hosted by you, Miriam, just talking about the differences in, in film history. This, this, that was lovely. That was lovely. Um, Josh, how about, how about you for Crab and Goyle? Obviously, they're uh, hugely popular characters that do a ton of things in the book, and most of them make to the screen, not everything. Uh, what, had you read the books beforehand? Were there, were there anything, any moments you wish happened um, that didn't, you didn't get to? Oh, you're just on mute still there, Josh. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Unmute yourself, young man. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I hadn't read the books. I'm a bit like Miriam. I'm, I'm not a fantasy guy. I was never into sci-fi. or fa I like my gritty stuff too, but sure. uh, I had a friend, he, he was really into them, and he said, you've got to read these books. I was like, yeah, it's not my thing, you know? Um, and then I got the audition. Then uh, I got a recall. Uh, no, 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 no. I did, I did the first audition. And then when they told me I had the recall, I thought I better read. I better read the first one for the recall, you know, so I'm clued up. And then I, I read the first three in like a week. A week, I think. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't put them down. So uh, I really enjoyed the books. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think Crab and Gore's parts are quite a bit big, uh, fairly fairly bigger in the uh, in 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 the books. And 100%. they play Quidditch. And I always I always wanted to. I was looking yeah, forward to the. I was looking forward to the Quidditch, you know, but they, 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 they cut that out. But, you know, they've got to do what they've got to do. So, yeah. Well, Quidditch is rather a disappointment because I can remember when we filmed the Quidditch game and we had to stand on little sort of plinth. It was holding, so hot. Holding a number. <laughs> and um, we, they, they said, uh, you, you know, number two or whatever our number was. And then we had to sort of look as if something had happened. It was all done on a green screen. I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> I, ju I just sort of went, oh, you know, it was like that. <laughs> what we call face acting. Because I, I remember it well. I didn't know what was happening. 
<laughs> well, and then Bonnie mentioned, uh, Bonnie, tell us, uh, you mentioned the, the rigs, you know, you, you're, we're, pick, we're in this fantasy world. We're seeing people flying on brooms, but then behind the scenes, it's like an awkward bicycle rig, uh, right. That people are like sitting on. <laughs> yeah. It was like a bicycle seat on a broom. And obviously the, the Quidditch like uniform outfit was like many layers of like padding and like, a. uh, cloak and all different sports kind of out. So you're really layered up. And then similar to when you're cheering on the platforms and when you're doing anything for green screen, you know, they're not actual real eye lines you're looking at, but instead like someone holding like a tennis ball on a stick, like moving along. So you're meant to be looking at green. So it was quite a lot of choreography and looking. And, and then at one point I was spun all the way around <laughs> and you had to, I obviously probably didn't have much like core strength, but you had to like hold and be always parallel to the like broomstick as I spun around. And once it like stopped working halfway and I was just like hanging like monkey looking off the, <laughs> off the, the arm. And it was just on an arm of like a cherry picker like crane. So it looked all pretty um DIY style, but you know, it looks amazing. When yeah. Together. We talked to, um, we did a previous Harry Potter panel. We talked to uh, Danielle Tabor, who plays Angelina, um, who does a, quite, quite a few. And she said they got progressively more comfortable, but basically described it the same way as just being super awkward <laughs> up front. Um, Bonnie, let's uh, continue. This is a question this uh, specifically for you, but then I want to ask the uh, panel as well. Uh, this is from Elizabeth Phillips. Uh, this, I'm Lizzie from Delaware. I'm 20 years old and a huge fan of Harry Potter. A uh, question for Bonnie. If you were chosen as a professor of Hogwarts, Hogwarts, what class would you want to teach? And then the, the question remains for the rest of the panel. If you had to pick a specific class or teacher from the series uh, that was your favorite, who would that be? But Bonnie, why don't we kick it off with you? I always thought, I think defense against the dark arts is obviously the like position that was always current, always replaced. So I wouldn't want, I would, I want to play I would, and be that role, but I feel like I would probably only be in one movie and then something would happen and I'd be pushed out. <laughs> so I don't know if I'd last that long, but I think all of the characters that came through that role were sure. just all my favorite characters. Um, you know, from the craziness of Gilderoy Lockhart to like the amazingness of um, David Thewlis's role as Lupin. I just think so many amazing people came through that profession profession role but clearly they didn't last long so maybe it was just <laughs> jinxed role but i would go with that Josh, you have a, uh, as, as a person who played a student, um, in Tolga too, technically you were kind of like uh, a younger person in the, in the cast. Uh, Josh and Tolga, do you have a favorite teacher or a class that you would have uh, liked to teach if let's say your character's now older, they get hired back at Hogwarts? Uh, I'd, what would I'd be like to be a spin-off. Um, and I'd love to play like uh, Snape's son that comes comes in many years later, the secret love child, and uh, <laughs> be, be a slightly younger Alan Mick Rickman because I just oh. think he was just the best. And R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. Alan Rickman, we love him. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I saw him a few times. We used to have um, when we used to go in early in the morning to have uh, hair and makeup. He was usually in the seat next to me, um, and he was very quiet <laughs> in the morning, and. Um, I was called the uh, the problem child. They said there was always a problem child on 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 the set with when when it came to hair because as you can see I've got a lot of it and it's um it's very thick and very curly and they just never knew what to do. And Alan wore 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 um wore a wig and um he was just uh, just to be in his presence every morning was was a joy. Wow. Um, and I think he he I can't imagine anyone playing that role better than than him. So uh, if so there good. was ever to be a spin-off where I could somehow be his uh, his child, that would be great. What a cool idea. What a cool idea. And there's a lot of fans asking about uh, working with Alan. And so shout out to the fans asking that. And yeah, RIP Alan. Yeah, Julian. Well, I quite simply would have loved to have played Dumbledore. Simple mm -hmm. as that. I go no further. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but you got them. You got you got them as the voice of Aragorn. You came back. The voice of Aragorn. <laughs> Wonderful compensation. <laughs> was you considered, uh, Julian? Yes, I was. Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, why should you? I didn't tell you. <laughs> well, like, sometimes it's common knowledge, you know. Sometimes people know these things. Yeah, I do quite a good Richard Harris. I was, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, obviously, obviously, shout out to Richard Harris and Michael Gambon. You know, they did a, a beautiful job. But yeah, that would have been a cool. Julian, I, we can see it. We can see it for sure. And that would have been uh, that would have cool. been a cool, uh, different, different interpretation on it for sure. Um, 
Josh, teacher, come if if uh, a crab uh, Goyle, sorry, had to come back as a teacher. Oh, Snape. Yeah, I mean, po- potion. Snape did, was potions, right? He did. Yeah, he, he was. was yeah, yeah, he was always wanting defense, but he was mo- mostly potions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, we were like we were like Snape's teacher's pets, weren't we? So, yeah, sure. I'd, I'd have to go with Snape. But my favorite, my favorite teacher was um, Lockhart. I mean, uh, I, I, I I enjoyed reading his, you know, reading those, his bits, but most in, in all the books. I just found him absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, he was my favorite. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's let's I want to turn things. Miriam, you mentioned, uh, obviously, Sprout is the head of uh, Hufflepuff. And this question always comes up. And I know the second I say Hogwarts house is everyone in the chat is going to go crazy with which is the best house uh, of the four. Uh, but if you had to sort, I don't know if anyone's done, you know, the sorting, um, but Miriam, or would you say that you identify best? You know, what, what house do you personally identify with best? Miriam, would you stick with Hufflepuff? <laughs> haven't got a flying. <laughs> the wrong person to ask. <laughs> it's about any of them. I know that one is called Slytherin. One is called one Slytherin. Is called, uh, Say- something else i don't know what they're called you got two out of three you got two out of four two out of four well i i really don't know but i'm sure they're all excellent in their own way <laughs> i haven't got a clue darling i think you would be an i think you'd be an excellent hufflepuff i, I believe that <laughs> well I, that's good because that's <laughs> yeah. what i have yeah david david do you have a so we have gryffindor slytherin ravenclaw and hufflepuff oh, david oh, yes. yeah, yeah well it would have to be slytherin i mean yeah. these are my people <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I when I read the first book, um, and I, I realized they were going to make a film, and I got my agent onto it. My kids said, "You've got to, you know, put yourself up for this." I, after I was reading the first book, I said, "Well, what part should I uh, put myself in for?" Hoping they would say Snape, because like sure. I worked with Alan Rickman at the RSC. We both started at the same time. He was the coolest guy ever, brilliant actor, and I thought, but it, up till then, he hadn't been cast. And I thought, well, Snape, he's, he's a slob. And my kids said, no, no, Dad, you're a natural filch. So I thought, well, that's... that's, that's <laughs> how children lovely. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, but, your, you, your children both said, you're a natural filch, but then you said earlier, they said, and also, also, don't mess this up, Dad. This is important. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Guy, uh, do you have a particular house that you feel yourself drawn to in the Harry Potter? May I be associated uh, with the remarks of Miriam? Because uh, <laughs> I don't know them either, I have to say. I'm, I, I, um, because uh, I wasn't really part of that world, actually, was I, as the Minister for Magic. But sure. um, I agree. Uh, uh, Julian Glover would have made a lovely Dumbledore, I think. But he is my favourite. And I do remember Richard Harris, that lovely moment where he says, but you've got something those other horrible people haven't got. Oh. And he said, what's that? And he, he yeah. told Mr. Miller, Mr. Harry, Harris putting his hand on his head and he was saying, love, Harry, love. <laughs> and that's oh. one of my favourite bits in the whole oh. thing. What a great actor. So I like Dumbledore. Very nice. Very nice. Julian, I don't know. Um, again, uh, Harry Potter house. Well, uh, th- see, like Dumbledore, I remain neutral. Ah. All the houses are great as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they're not, and then I deal with it. Safe answer. Safe answer. <laughs> I had no influence on the film. Very nice. Very nice. Tolga, I know, um, I don't even, they, I know that the houses are out there for Durmstrong. I, I don't know them off the top of my head. Um, I don't know if you know them or if again, more of the, the British houses particularly are you're drawn to. Um, I, I get asked this when I go to conventions, like which house do you consider? Sure. Yourself? But obviously we are where, you know, my school is Durmstrong and I'm sure we do have our own houses. I, I don't know if, um, there are any official houses for Durmstrong. JK created, but um, I'm sticking with Durmstrang, so I always say I'm not affiliated with Hogwarts at all. <laughs> um, but if, if we, the closest is probably Slytherin. So if I had to choose, um, yeah, I would probably go with Slytherin. Very nice. And last but not least, Bonnie, obviously we know uh, Ginny is a, uh, a, a Gryffindor, um, but you personally, does that feel like uh, where you're drawn as well? Yeah, and I've done my, you know, you can do the uh, yeah, yeah. personality test on Pottermore <laughs> to see what house you're in. And I'm proud to say Bonnie, as me, is a Gryffindor. So. <laughs> 
that must have been that must have been nerve wracking. That must have been nerve wracking. Like you wouldn't know how to share yeah. it if it was something else, right? <laughs> it was nerve wracking because they were filming me whilst I did the oh text. My gosh. So I was like, what if I get a house I don't like? Do I have to like pretend that I'm like, yay, all house is good? But really, I just want Gryffindor. Um, so I was pleased to do Gryffindor. I haven't done. You can also find out your Patronus on Pottermore too, but I haven't yes. done that. One. Yeah. And I've been more resistant to that because I feel you know houses there's just four, whereas to get a Patronus it's like loads of different animals, and I would be upset if I got an animal that. So I, I basically really want an animal that's like a, a water-based ocean animal. So I'm like hoping when I do it, I get. Like a whale, because imagine the <laughs> whale coming in. You'd like take oh. over the whole room. Oh. The spider. Yeah. Spider. Julian Spider. I mean, we're on it. People people are talking about Patronuses um, out there. It's an intense test, the Patronus one. You have to like put headphones on and be like centered. And you get asked these questions like very quickly, like rapid fire. It's an intense process. Oh, okay. I need to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to be like in a, in a good good headspace. Um, my gosh, we are uh, completely out of time. Uh, this has been such a lovely chat. We've, we've heard a lot um, from each of you about just your relationship to Harry Potter. Uh, we know and love you as our, our favorite characters from the series. Uh, one quick thing um, from Laura VM, and then we'll do a quick round robin around for everyone to give their final shout outs to the fans. But uh, Laura VM, Ginny, uh, Ginny, <laughs> Bonnie, uh, I know you've been to uh, the Wizarding World uh, as part of its opening and it did recreate it, you know, Ginny for those rides. Uh, if folks are wondering if anyone else, you know, by a show of hands has been to, you know, they recreated the Harry Potter world in Florida and California. Anyone else been there and, and experienced that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tolga, David, nice. Oh, my gosh. I think yeah. they, every, every year for like the last few years, they, they would kind of like invite, pick out about 10 people or pe- and, and send them out there for a few days. Um, and I, I got to go once and it, it's, it's insanely amazing. It's insanely amazing. Insanely amazing. And they, you know, everyone's really proud of the world that they created. You you really can't beat it. It's yeah, so it feels amazing. more real than the film set because there isn't, you know, corners <laughs> that you go around and then it's actually just scaffolding, scaffolding. lighting and tables. It's There's like, no oh, crew sitting there eating sandwiches or yeah. anything like that. <laughs> real butterbeer, whatever that. <laughs> just just tourists, yeah, just tourists uh, eating sandwiches. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's so amazing. David, you've been there as well? I've been to the, the Florida one, yeah, yep. and um, one of the most amazing virtual reality rides ever through the castle and the mountain, and it goes down into the ocean, to the lake, and and um, it was a great uh, jolly for about four days, and uh, they flew us <laughs> out there for, uh, um, for a DVD launch, and uh, oh, it was great, I absolutely loved it. And the one that leads them, which I haven't been to since it opened. And uh, there were people in, in the Great Hall just just looking out, and, the, and, uh, and I'm looking around saying, yeah, I used to work here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but when, I, I, when I went, I actually went with, um, with David and, and David's daughter, Francesca. Um, oh. It's one of my favourite memories because I think we, just, we all just had way too much to drink. And they shut down the park after a certain time and you kind of have free run of it. And we were just wow. on the rides and just oh my we had gosh. the best time. I've got some great pictures of David and I just a little bit too merry. <laughs> all right. Okay. I mean, we all. <laughs> <laughs> A, cu- a couple, a couple too many fire water uh, shots. Uh, as I some, some sort of agreement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And then the Warner Brothers Studio Lot tour in London, another uh, beautifully done, uh, just throwback, you know, memorabilia and everything. And uh, shout out to yeah. Yeah. yeah, Josh, you've got kids. Have you? You have not taken uh, any plans? I know times are tough right now, and and please, please be safe, everyone down in Florida and California, my gosh. But, um, you know, when, when things are back to kind of uh, able to travel and such, any plans to take the kids to Harry Potter World? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love yeah. to. That'd be amazing. I, I was actually really lucky and recently um, I, got to, I got to do a couple Comic Cons. I did um, Ace in Chicago, but I, I managed to tie it in with another Comic Con and uh, I, I ended up, you know, traveling over six states with, and I took my, my then, he was then nine. So we made, a, we made like a, like, you know, it was an unforgettable trip out of it. I, it was just the most amazing experience. Didn't do Florida, but um, I was meant to do, I was meant to do uh, the uh, con in Florida and, um, yeah, this, this month. But obviously that, that wasn't going to happen. Sure. Um, but, but yeah, Very I'd nice. love to take them. Yeah. 
Um, well, again, uh, we are so out of time, but we appreciate you all being here. The fans have just been, the stream and the chat has been nothing but love and hearts for each one of you as an actor throughout your career and then your characters that you portrayed. Um, you brought them all beautifully to life and we just uh, really appreciate you being here and giving us like a short break from everything. We're all in this shared experience together. And so uh, we thank you on behalf of, of, again, fans watching from around the world. It is a global phenomenon and fandom Harry Potter. So let's quickly go around just um, final shout outs and then I'll give my little uh, spiel at the end. Um, but uh, just final shout outs to all the fans watching. We'll go, we'll go in reverse order. Tolga, why don't we start with you? Uh, shout out to every, everyone here, all of the actors that are here. I mean, uh, um, I'm, it's a huge privilege to um, be on this screen and to be associated with you guys in some respect through the Harry Potter world. And the Harry Potter world means a lot to me, um, as I'm sure it does to many, many people all over the world. And I'm just really uh, proud of that. And I'm proud of everyone else. And just thank you uh, to uh, you guys for having me on. Awesome. Thanks, Tolga. Josh? Yeah, I'd just like to, yeah, I just want to say, I can't, you know, just want to say thanks also. Uh, you know, Harry Potter impacted so many people's lives and, it, and it, it, I'm the same, it impacted my life. It's, it's weird to think how, what direction my life would have gone without Harry Potter. So, yeah, thank you. And, uh, and yeah, for the, you know, continued uh, support for the, for the franchise. Awesome. And happy birthday to your son. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> it was actually uh, about two, two weeks ago. We had to, we had to postpone <laughs> it twice. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, delayed. Uh, happy belated. Happy belated. Um, Thank you. Guy? Uh, yeah, I just want to say um, thanks to uh, everybody involved in the Harry Potter. It's such a lovely, lovely time. To David Yates, lovely, brilliant director. And yes, he was... Yes was one of the people who, uh, you know, quite often in the show business, people say, oh, I, you know, we must work together again. Or something. And he said that to me when I did a tiny part for him on telly in a thing called The Young Visitors. And uh, he said, I, I, I'd like to use you again. And I thought, oh, yeah. And he did. And he kept his word on that. So thank you, David. And uh, thanks for having me on the panel. And uh, take care of yourselves. Keep your distance. Yes, yes, yes. Stay safe, stay healthy. Keep your distance, wear a mask. Julian. I'd just like to say hello to everybody properly um, uh, and to say thank you for watching all this. I think we've been quite entertaining with the other guys. <laughs> Very entertaining, Julian. Very entertaining. Oh, no, you cut out a little bit there. What? Sorry, your last sentence just cut out a little bit. Yeah, tell, it, <laughs> tell us again. Of course, uh, by Jamie being in it as well. And so we have, have a mutual love of the subject. And, uh, it's lovely to be here among you, you guys who have been so important to it. God bless. Oh, thank you, Julian. David? Well, it was, of course, a great thing to be a part of, but uh, an event like this, when you read out the numbers of uh, people in the different countries uh, uh, that have uh, tuned in just, just to this event, yes. it, it's great just to be reminded how much how much love the, the, the movies are and uh, I'm very honoured to have been a part of it. It, it it's made a difference to all our lives in a sense and uh, I just uh, just love the feedback we've had from people all over the world and long may it continue yeah awesome yeah Miriam oh it's a lovely family lovely to be with you all lots of love big hug stay safe <laughs> thank you Miriam and Bonnie yeah, thank you, Aaron. It's lovely to see all our faces on this like virtual uh, world, and I'm sure it brightened up everyone's day and week. Is obviously quite strange time what we're living in, and it's nice that we can still connect via the internet. And yeah, it's just been such a joy in these experiences, whether it's virtual or or when we get to meet fans at Comic Cons or at the. Um, theme parks just to see like the continual joy that Harry Potter has kept getting people and I think a home that it's created for so many people. <coughs> I think I, for the first time, actually rewatched some of the movies during this quarantine time oh. since we like finished shooting them and it just reminded me just how and why they've become what they have become. They're like the perfect escapism. So this has been a little bit of an escape. They are, they are. 
Well, thank you. Uh, just a quick reminder to the fans. Um, you know, we had a, such a great panel today. If you would like some one-on-one -on -one time with each one of these amazing actors, head to Wizard World Virtual. You can purchase those one-on-one -on -one Zoom video chats. Uh, it's just you, a Wizard World employee, and your favorite actor or actors um, in a Zoom meeting. So check that out at wizardworldvirtual.com. Those are on sale, whether you're watching this live or three days later. Uh, then autographs and video recorded messages as well. So we know times are tough, but if you can treat yourself or treat a loved one, definitely take advantage of those. Uh, but that's why we bring these panels to you free to give you a nice little escape uh, from your day. And we appreciate all of these amazing actors being here. Um, shout out to Go Collect, our sponsor. Head to gocollect.com. We appreciate them as well for sponsoring this panel. And I just want to end before I outro you all and get the emojis pumping. Uh, a lovely sentiment from a fan watching. Again, fans watching from around the world. Uh, but Kashuki underscore doctor says, this world needs a little bit of magic and good souls like the characters that you all play. The compassion and love and vibe is something that takes us to a world of wonders, which we can only wish of and heart emojis. So that is uh, from a specific fan, but I know is speaking on behalf of all the fans out there. So we say thank you. Wizard World Virtual Experience fans watching from around the globe on three different streams, please give it up one more time. Let's get a big round of emojis for Tolga Safer, Josh Herdman, Guy Henry, Julian Glover, David Bradley, Miriam Margolis, and Bonnie Wright, everybody. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.